very good morning everybody and welcome to the Potters Resort 2022 World Indoor Bowls Championships live from Hopton on Sea. This morning's game is another World Open singles, it's Scotland's Darren Burnett against Hong Kong's Ken Chan. So let's have a little look at what we have for the rest of today. Two o'clock is world number one, Nick Brett facing the United States qualifier Lauren Dion. Following that game around about 3.30 is Alex Marshall MBE against Ireland's Mark McPeak. And at 7.30 is an All England affair, it's Greg Harlow against Danny Dennison. Our match officials for this morning's game, the market is Bernie Hill, the umpire is Mike Davies and on the shot clock is Neil Bryce. So let's go live now to the portable rink here at Potter Resort and join our MC, Mr. Johnny Laff. Oh, thank you, Jason. Our first player out this morning is all the way from Hong Kong. He's a former Scottish and Welsh Open qualifier and is a previous Hong Kong Classic Pairs and Hong Kong League champion, as well as holding several national titles. Give a nice warm welcome to Ken Chan. <laughs> seven British Arts titles and numerous national titles as well as being a Commonwealth gold medalist. His world pairs, mixed pairs and world singles record ranked number 11 in the world. Welcome out Scotland's Darren Burnett. Jason Parkinson. Well, thank you very much there, Johnny. Once again, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Potter's Resorts for the World Indoor Singles Championships. Joining me in the commentary box this morning, well, I've got a little bit of a treat for you. The gentleman that first won the World Singles back in 1986, made the double in 87, and then here at Potter's in 02. It's the one and only Tony Alcock. I will be a very good morning, Tony. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, everybody. 25 and a half metres. Thanks for taking your morning out and joining us live from the beautiful part of the Cotswolds. Thank you, Jason. Looking forward to it, actually. Well, Ken Chan's no stranger to the portable rink. Qualified back in 2016 for the Worlds, 2010 for the Scottish, and also qualified when we had the Welsh Open. So he'll be used to this kind of a surface. Suppose, Tony, for yourself, you've seen how the game's completely changed over the years at the World Championships. Yeah, um, it has. The style has changed. The um, bowls have changed. But you know, fundamentally, um, it, it still um, it still requires the, the the strict discipline of actually concentrating on your own game, and quite clearly. Um, that will be the, the issue with with, with, with um, uh, Darren to overcome somebody who, to all, to all, all intents and purposes, he is he is um, favourite to, to to win this match, um, and in order to do so, he must clearly focus on his own game because if he um, with the experience one green. Of the game in this three feet. He he will just pull on those resources and and should see him through. Um, always difficult when you're playing somebody who, the, the you know who, whose expectations are that uh, Ken will know that he's got um, a formidable opponent and will need to be at his absolute level best to to um, to challenge him. But likewise, uh, so has Darren. He's got to be on his form uh, in order to to. Say that again, Darren. Uh, just, um, two and a half feet. 
you know, with the sets play being, you know, very short formats, it's uh, very important to get the first couple of ends under your belt. Each player gets 20 minutes practice just before the first session. So still a little bit of room for Kent. Anything within Slightly 30 inches of this jack will be fine. was the seventh ball delivered which was anything like the standard that we would expect both players to aspire to which just indicates that it's that practice ends and then a break and then called on that's alien it's only peculiar in 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 this type of uh, of format when you have a break and it takes some time to get settled and um, it's like the eight, the eight ball right so opening blood to Ken Chan he's brought the mat quite a way up the rink there's six and a half meters to play with with the mat from the tee to the spot as long as the jack travels now 23 meters minimum that is fine Jack length, 25 and a half metres. What is interesting for me, Jason, is to try to watch how the game plan that, that each player will bring to this rink uh, folds out. Obviously, um, it, it is important in any singles game initially to play to your strength. Um, go to your strength, forget the opponent, um, and quite frankly, if if you're playing to your strength and you're playing remarkably well, then it doesn't really matter much, much what the opponent's doing. You still persevere. Um, obviously, Darren is, is also uh, struggling. Um, and uh, both players need to focus, settle down on their own game. Um, in, in practice, they would have been probably all over this, Jack, but obviously it's a start, it's a bit, it's a bit strange. It's early in the morning, uh, or early in the, earlier in the morning, that most people play in, in, in the evenings, um, and uh, that's alien as well. Um, but both, need, both players need to settle down. Yeah, and that's what Ken's done. Noticed... When Ken first arrived, he, he was playing with the, the Taylor ball, which he's playing with now. He did quickly swap to a different model. I'd have noticed his comeback. Did play very well in the pairs with his partner, Lyndon Sham. The mindset is something similar again. Wouldn't don't need to adjust. Don't think about the last bowl. Just do exactly as you did before. Favorites two green down. Well, it's managed to stay in for another. Good second shot 
for. Hand is also available for Ken if he wants to. He can just get down to the, the rest of Darren Burnett's bowl. I think he is going to play that. There's no danger on this hand. I think that's a good shout, Jason. At the end of the day, you know, the both players are still trying to get into the game. Have a have a sneaky look at this forehand while nobody's looking. Well, here it comes. Just needs to miss the front. It's a cracking ball. A little bit unlucky is just release the jack, but that was a fantastic bowl. Yeah, he has, and uh, I think going back to the, I might be thinking about playing a little bit of a, a, um, a, a little bit of an attacking bowl here. He's got the front red bowls that might um, help out. <clears throat> Well, good hit. Jack's just slightly run across the seam. <coughs> Ken says he's not sure. Yep. One shot, Ken Chan. Yep, single to Ken. Set score is 0 2 after two hits. Ken Chan has been playing out of the CCC club in Hong Kong, has now moved to the UK just before the new year. Has a lot of family in the Manchester area. His wife is currently expecting. Length, Little babies due in March. So it's been a busy time for Ken, moving in between Christmas and New Year. Well, that's <laughs> always very stressful. This is a, a, um, a problem. Obviously, Ken looked at this um, choice of, of backhand again. He obviously prefers it, but uh, his own bowl is not going to help him. It's somewhere near where he wants to be. And if he collides with it, then it will just... Exactly. That was the point. He, he looked at that. And that's a challenge for players, is that they want to keep to their same hand to keep a rhythm. And then you've got to balance that with the reality that clearly the bowl that he actually hit and stopped him was exactly in, in, the, in the line that he needed to get um, a, a good first shot. Well, just looking for very good pace. Either side of the front red ball with good pace would be good. One red. Well, second, it wasn't far away with a miss, maybe just a foot short of a jack level. No, it was, it was a, 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 great, a, a great attempt. Change of hand. Uh, he didn't want to change hand last time, so he, he showed his hand, and Darren's got to make sure that he avoids that green bowl. Any touch on that, um, quite the weight, but uh, and will definitely be playing on that forehand again. Um, I, I think he can, quite frankly, he, what he doesn't need to do is to drop short. He, he's, he's, he wants to have a little bit of fuel in this bowl, not necessarily heavy, but he, he needs to make sure he arrives to rest the bowl, promote his own, to the jack, um, 
However, um, it's still very much a draw, but he must make sure that he is arriving. And I think he's taken a, a wider line, which certainly um, it, it is not the requirement. He needed certainly to be in amongst those bowls with that weight. Not quite. One shot. Well, Darren's going to get on the scorecard. He'll probably keep the map back. Yeah, score one, two out of three. Goes something maybe slightly further. Yeah, Jason, this is the first time that we will see Darren playing to his strength. He will be playing the jack length that he's practiced on. Um, according to the trade, his bread and butter length and most players do have this irrespective of whether they're playing indoor or outdoor it's surprising that, that players do have uh, a preference um, in the high performance you can actually see when all of your performance is charted that, that naturally and it's really strange this naturally you have a preferred length irrespective of whether you're on a fast fast green a heavy green indoor outdoor, outdoor green um, yeah, I suppose it's only when you get to that level, Tony, that you, you know, when you've got people being paid to, you know, monitor and and, and kind of supply that kind of coaching that you might need. You know, at, at bowls we don't get that unless you'd have to maybe fork out of your own money for a coach, which not many people do in bowls. No, no, it, it, it's coaching. It, it, it's not. Uh, as well as coaches is in a lot of other sports, but if, if people it's, um, really two inches short of Jack High. play well and to enjoy bowls, irrespective of whether they're at this level or at club level, um, they want to get enjoyment. And you know, if you're a competitor and you're playing sport, even though you're only playing it for fun, if you do well, it's great to return to the clubhouse and think, you know what, I've had a really nice afternoon. I haven't won, but I've played well, and you know. You basically you can get better through natural learning, but it does help if somebody's there just to give you the basics to, to, to correct you and, and and put you on the road where you can see, you know, where you can follow a path of improvement. One green. Darren on a wide line there, obviously um, got the bowls and the bias to bring him all the way back to the centre if he had the, the weight just a bit short. Now that was my last ball please. Two and a half feet. Yeah, it's a, it's a much bigger swing on that forehand towards the commentary box. Backhand's, there's a decent line to it, there's actually two lines to it on the backhand, there's a slightly tighter line which funny enough is slightly heavier, I know that sounds a bit silly but the, the inside hand is a slightly heavier hand. I view this bowl as being important at the moment. There's a very, very attractive shot down on the forehand for Darren through those bowls, any angle. And uh, yeah, you can uh, 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 a pretty useful bowl. But Darren, I think we'll be looking on, on the forehand now. Um, I'm not sure what amount of weight he will use, dependent on what he's practiced on and, and the style of the ring, but he certainly will be playing forehand down onto those red balls. Lots of angles um, available, but he's changing the change to the backhand. I'm surprised. Well, he's hit the front and he's got some movement on this jack, so... 
Bet Ken's glad that isn't the end of the rink there. <laughs> the jack will get respotted. Well, it looks like it's still two. I think Darren Burnett has um, quite a cavalier style of play, and I know that some people have often maybe described your game as a little bit cavalier as well, Tony, you know, when you was at your peak. Certainly. Um, adventurous, I would say, and, um, it, you know, brave. Darren's a brave player and um, he played backhand then, you know, and this is a case in point. He's practised, he knew what the, the rink was likely to do. So whilst it looked a forehand set, he played backhand, he knew what he was doing. Um, and he got his three Three shots, Ken Chan. On the rink. But, but, you know, he played safe chances. Set so score one. Darren is a very, very good conversion player. He, he takes his chances. Um, pe some people, and I felt, um, have been unfair in the past, and he's a lucky player. Um, he, he 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 has conviction in those shots. He's always got he's always got enough power in the tank to get amongst them, and that the angles weren't necessarily right for him um, when he played that shot. But equally, I've seen him play many many shots. The same situation, coming into the head, shuffling around. Um, and, and, and finding a nest of gold. Jack length 25 metres. Just a quick question for you, Tony, from an Andrew Duggan. Wants to know, are you actually still playing any bowls? No, no, no absolutely not. I, I cannot. I can honestly say I've, I've never played com um, competitive bowls since I won the world, my last world t title in, in, in 2000, uh, I think it was. I don't know when it was, um, but it was a long time ago. Um, and people have said, why is that? Uh, don't you play it for fun? It can't be fun, can it? I can never <laughs> ever stop doing what I was. Uh, and if I can't, if I can't do my best, I, I don't try it. I have played a few, you know, sort of charity games and things like that. And found myself under enormous pressure. People came to watch. I mean, <laughs> came to watch how much I deteriorated or whatever. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still play well, but. Um, Seriously, you know, if you're going to do something, do it properly. And, and I wasn't going to play around and I, and I finished at the top. Yes. Well, here comes another excellent draw ball. Yeah, it's past um, seven inches past Jack High. Interesting head here uh, for Darren. You might be thinking about attacking this. A lot, a lot of people will just go straight back to the draw shot, but don't be surprised if he has a go. Well, on away. Darren's bowl has actually just also stayed on the rink right at the edge, about 18 inches from the edge. Ken's bowl has left the rink. So, he needs to get another one close, but not to create too much of a target because that's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. He might go again. Close. That's a jack. Well, the jack will go to the Respot position again. There it is. One to Darren. Plenty of room for Kent. On the inside of the mat, just allowing the ball to stay up as long as he can. So interestingly that delivery he 
actually stand on the mat so he delivers out the line as opposed to inside it. Um, which you have to do on the belly, um, when you're very close to, to the edge of the ring. I, I, I would think the fact that Darren has played um, weight any movement on the jack in the ditch it's a, a, a golden count um he'll be attacking this jack cleaning the ditch will be very good has done oh, oh, oh. <laughs> ken must be thinking what do i have to do definitely two three well just shows you the importance of having a good drive there three Tony. Shots down the net yeah i mean you know, seriously if you if you think about it Set score four um, five after Darren, five ends Darren hasn't hasn't drawn many um many decent shots at all it's it's the armory of the the weighted shot that he he does so well um and in his part of his game um if if those shots were restricted um and he he was just made to draw all the time he'd hardly score hardly have scored in this set um but that's that's the game you need you know you've got that Jump toolkit in. 28 um, and, and you take out what what you need to use and and what he's done is put himself right back into the game um please, without really drawing a decent Four, shot five. Um, and now, of course, he, you know he he can probably breathe a sigh of relief, concentrate on these first two bowls now, and hopefully we'll see, or he will see for himself, um, a vast improvement in his opening bowls. Disappointing opening bowls, really. First three bowls are, are very beatable. Four and a half feet. Okay, so we just need to just relax. It's simple. And they certainly would be um, will be disappointed in, in, in the in the first three bowls delivered here. <clears throat> Well, here comes a great adjustment from Ken. Sat nicely right behind the jack. Darren, keeping to the backhand, realistically speaking, he will want to try to get a close bowl here. He going to be a, a, a marvellous bowl to actually draw the shot it would be fantastic but um i think now he's got that bowl he will he did have a look at that forehand uh, to rest the bowl there's more of the bowl showing on that side but now he's got that bowl in um i think we might see darren tempting his shot on the forehand unless of course this bowl um takes that shot away well it's in the area again Nice and gently on the jack. Superb. Two superb bowls from Ken Chan. Now, Here this is... Uh, that's the view. He's got uh, very little target. And his own red bowl might deflect if he's on if he's online. Um, but uh, I've seen Darren over the years 
when he's not been playing particularly well, he, he he's been scratching Time around, and all of a sudden he, he brings out a most magnificent bowl. And it's these times that I've seen this so often. And he's contemplating weight. I don't think there's a lot of, of weight to shot. I think it's they're all in a line. I feel that he, he will probably have a look at the forehand and see if he can uh, 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 draw it. He's going to be incredibly lucky on these angles if, if he gets it right, because he's got to get that front bowl at an angle to make it go straight on to his second short bowl uh, and to spring the jack out. So I, I believe that he's going to have a lot of luck here if he's playing weight. Well, he hit the target, but like I said, Tony, there's just a little bit of a distance between the front bowl and the next bowl. So it's going to be Ken Chan has this last bowl to make a full house. special about this bowl but it's absolutely important that he gets it in to make that full house that would be what he's going to do again. four shots ten chance well ken chan four, now four, puts nine, a bit more six, distance between himself and darren now leads nine shots to four just three ends to go So the game plan, um, Jason, it is, is slightly different now, is that Ken is just going yeah, to try to play safe and tight. Uh, Darren is going to take every single opportunity, uh, whatever the risk, um, to, to get a few more shots on the board over these next few ends. Ken's going to make a mistake here. He doesn't want to, to play short because Darren will be lifting his hands and playing the conversion shots um, as soon as possible. Okay, he's probably disappointed he didn't get a closer one, but still under pressure, Darren, to get that close ball. Yeah, again, just slightly slipping past. Tactically, Jason, I'd have, I actually would put a, a back bowl in here, purely and simply, not only because I it's, it's the right might be, but psychologically to go down. Basically, you're not drawing very well, mate. You can't draw that, but you might actually hit the jack in the ditch. So I'm going to spoil your thunder. And he hasn't done it. I think you'll find the jack going in the ditch somewhere now. Well, two away. Gives himself a, a little bit more room to get out of trouble.
again here cheekily i might just put a back bowl in here and leave him that that distance to draw he hasn't achieved it so far um just psychologically it's almost this is the, the this is how you how you actually play if ken put the, the back bowl in and you'll say right darren okay go on and draw it you, you know I, i'll 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 settle with with five nine up with two ends to go Oh, big bowl for Darren. Definitely won't want to drop three here. So late in this set. Here comes shot bowl. Oh, just the four in it now. Ken Channel just need to win this end to see this set out. Darren ideally probably wanting to score a minimum of two to give himself a chance. Jack length, 29 and a half metres. first bowl here on this uh, backhand of which he's played exceptionally well so far um, he would like to have been closer but at this stage of the game he needs to match each bowl and preferably beat each bowl of Darren's Please holding a shot, please. Mike? Pressure. Yes. And he, he just needs to seal this set. And this is the bowl he can do it with. Yeah, just leave him a bit, bit too much room at the moment. One decent bowl will do. Darren seemed happier with this. His, um, body actions and facial expressions were more positive when he let this one go. Yep, it's a well played draw. Nothing too exciting for Ken. He'll just try and draw the shot back. Won't be bothered dropping a one this end. No. He won't, but he, he really does need to get the shot here. Really, is it really important? Aaron is a dangerous competitor. And so easily fight back. And I've seen him come back from the death on many occasions. <laughs> so, crucial ball for Darren. This must count.
Yep. Clear it. He's made it. Well, chance now for Ken. He can afford to reach up to it if he wants to. Even any promotion on the front red into the pack. As long as there's a bit of jack movement, he should do pretty well out of it. Time out for the first time. Can I score a timeout remaining? With the ball that's. A, this is a bit of a pressure attached to this ball. So far, it's been pressureless. Well, surprising. Forehand shot. Won't get back. Won't get back with that. Mm. Well, Battle on. Yep. Darren lives to fight another Good end. Good shot. Darren Burnett. Both players have won four ends apiece in this set. set. Four, it was seven, just nine after eight that ends. big four and three for Ken on the fourth and sixth end. Cracking player, Ken Chan. One bowler of the year in Hong Kong. Four times now, national singles winner, 2012, 13 and 15, won the pairs many, many times. Good bowl CV, going back many years. Will certainly be a great addition to our Lancashire team. Darren. Preferring length, his, uh, preferred length. He, over the years in singles, has opted for a, a rather more of a longer jack than a short one. Um, when on form, he can play all, all all lengths, but this would be his. That would be his choice when you watch him play. It's usually his armchair length, um, a longer jack. sure about that one Darren it's it's, uh, it's at almost protecting that shot bowl and um, is not going to help the cause Darren wants will would have definitely have tried to remove that green bowl at some point in time and um, that, that his second delivery is actually almost guarding it this is a good method. yeah anything Excuse center me. ink was always going to be very good for Kent As you would say, Jason, trouble at mill. <laughs> Good northern saying that. Oh, yeah, just trying to give himself a chance with this third bowl. Could push this solid onto the pack. Has done. Now, how far is Ken's bowl going? Well, it stayed on the rink. Oh. This will be difficult now. There's where the jack is, right? Yes. Yeah. Ken just needs to put another bowl in there, ideally nowhere near his shot bolt. Darren needs a two minimum this end, so just wants to leave them away from each other. Force Darren some kind of a trick shot. Perfectly true, Jason. Just needs really to beat that red one. Yeah. Stop 
Stop any time now. Any time now. <laughs> what that? <laughs> what the noise is? That was actually the shot clock. Just wasn't uh, re resetting time. <laughs> thought, you thought it was tea time, Tony. <laughs> well, I thought Potters was on fire. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Up anyway. <laughs> For those of you just joining us, Tony isn't in the commentary box with me. Tony's quite a few hundred miles away in the Cotswolds, joining us from his home. Darren just yeah, managed to three time remaining. see the clock ticking click, ticking down there. Obviously, each player gets the 30 seconds. They have five timeouts available to them. That gives them an additional 60 seconds. If they get to a tie break, they get an additional one. Darren's having a look at this because he needs two to tie this set. The only way he's going to get that is by removing both of the green balls from the rink. His ball won't need to stop on because it looks like he's got two third shots he's going to need a good angle on this green ball and some quite a bit of pace a snooker shot in balls yep that's why he's playing the forehand across the rink to get that good angle back to the nearest green ball Well, just the one of them away, so it's going to be a single shot to Ken Chan. And he's going to take this opening set, 10 shots to 7. Don't forget, we have got plenty more bowls for you today. Coming up in the afternoon session, starting at 2 o'clock, we have our world number one, Nick Brett. He's going to be facing the... American qualifier of Lauren Dion from California. Following that game, round about 3.30, will be Alex Marshall, MBE, taking on the Belfast qualifier of Mark McPeak. And for the game in this evening session, 7.30. It's an England affair. It is Greg Harlow against Danny Dennison. Jack length, 25 and a half metres. I think Darren will just look to regroup, just look at raising the consistency level, I think, Tony. Yeah, it, it really is all in his hands, uh, to be fair. You know, the beauty of, of sets play is that all that is passed and it has no uh, effect. The set is gone, yeah, but it's like a, a new day. A new day is dawning um, and, yes, he's got to win both, but um, at the end of the day... The traditional game of singles was 21 up um, and you're not playing well and you find yourself 19-3, 19-4, 5 down, you're in trouble. But um, there's all to play for in this match. I'm a toucher at holding. Yes. I uh, wonder if he might, as he has, well played, well thought out, forehand uh, draw, airing anywhere sort of on the wide side, but not short, not short when you're playing against Darren because he will be at some point of time attacking this, and that's a, a fair ball. The area would have preferably liked it slightly more to our left there because any movement on the jack on a draw and it's going to squeeze over there. Um, Darren won't want to play too much weight on this because the wrong angle on that green bowl and the red ball goes. Better play a bit safe in this set. Let's try to sneak home. How far was my last ball, please? Three feet. So I got the first shot. 
Yes. I'm not sure, Jason, on this forehand that I'd want to get terribly close. I, I, I would probably, in a sense, like to err on the wider side on this um, on this hand, just to sit somewhere adjacent. Not sure, getting terribly close to it is going to achieve a lot. Yeah, that was almost inch perfect. There was a little bit of danger. You know, he could have just missed the jack and got to the red bull. Would have just thickened it up a little bit. But like you say, Tony Darren will be down at this now. Not, it's not certain where the jack will go, but as long as he just cuts the count down, that'll be the main thing. These shots he gets, and he usually gets good results. But not this time. So again, a nice free shot here for Kent. Just concentrate. Sometimes the, the more distance you have to make a shot, Tony, the more you've got to concentrate. But anyway, that, that was enough. And uh, marvellous start, start, Darren. Um, Set score, zero, zero, three after one end. Focusing. Run forward. That was a better end from Darren, though. Is he he was um, challenged with that opening ball uh, by excellent play um, by Ken, but um, you know he's he's still very much in the match. Jack, uh, twenty six meters. When you get an open draw like this, Tony, there's a question just come in. Um, do you always have like a, a preferred hand to draw on? Like if you had any choice and both hands were exactly equal, would you go to your forehand or your backhand? Um, interesting. In my career, um, it, it, it changed somewhat. Um, I, 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 I mean, yes, that, that there are preferable hands for particular shots. A classic example here, Andy Thompson, would always drive on the forehand if he was going fast. David Bryant would always drive on the backhand, given the choice. Um, I think, as far as I was concerned, my given an equal um, rink, uh, a perfect rink, which which very hard to find, but generally speaking, a fair rink. Um, I, I part of my life um, enjoyed playing, uh, drawing on the backhand, but latterly, um, it was my it was my forehand. Don't ask me why. <laughs> and of course, Jason, at, at, at all levels, it's not a good idea to be have a hand that you constantly want to play and don't have the confidence to play the other side because there are times in a in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a match where in fact you can't play the hand which is your favorite and you have the the, the other one so it, it's whilst it's good to have a, pre, a preferable hand uh, it's bad if 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 you really always want to play it irrespective Well, Ken, this isn't too far away. Just needs to get up to the jack. It's a very good second shot. Just fell away. Aaron, 
meaning to draw on the forehand. Get in there quietly while nobody's looking. Doesn't want to uh, really widen it just over the weight. Actually, it would have perfect shot with looking just to turn the jack round. Uh, we're not sure whether, in fact, it's one or two. But um, it's a measure, and I don't think it changes the shot. Um, but Ken, he drew beautifully, actually, with his last bowl. He, was, he just sat down. Otherwise, I think he, he would have definitely been second bowl. Shot doesn't change. Similar to the former. Yep, just managed to see that. There's no point in rushing. Last thing you want to be doing on the mat is rushing your delivery. Concentrate on this. Needs to bend. Thank you. Thought from the hand he was heavy and, and he he went forward with some um, um, expectation, I think, and then took a step back. And that's an indication to me that he was actually pulling the ball back slightly. He knew he was slightly <laughs> over the way. Big chance here for Darren. Well, it's already one and a measure, so. Any slight nudge on the jack will be a bonus. Just not making the trip though. One pipe, please. One red, measure for second. Well, the measure in these question about the qualifying process for overseas. Well, each of the PBA branches, so the PBA is a professional bowling association that run the qualifiers uh, for the World Bowls Tour. Each branch has their own set of qualifiers. So depending on where they are in the world, some uh, have uh, qualifiers on the outdoor greens like they do in America and Canada. Uh, and then some countries uh, that do have the indoor facilities will use an indoor um, surface. The, the rules are still the same. We still use the sets, play and things like that. Uh, and then the winners of that particular qualifier, well, they come over to the UK and they go straight into the draw. It's very popular in, um, especially in the southern hemisphere. Obviously, due to the travel regulations and two, three things two. going on at the moment, New Zealand, Australia, um, we're not able to travel at all. Uh, South Africa and Israel almost got here <laughs> until just a couple of weeks before the championships, and then changed again. But we managed to get Canada, the USA, and Hong Kong. Here. That length, twenty-four and a half meters. It's always great to have the overseas players in in any tournament, Tony. It is indeed, um, because it, it, it brings different styles, it, it brings um, colour and also uncertainty because you really don't know. I have never seen Ken play before um, and, and don't know him. I've never seen him before um, and that's probably because I've missed him when he's not been playing on, the t on TV, but uh, it's interesting to see. Uh, a new player, um, a, a new player to me, to watch the style um, and to learn uh, every every bowls game you learn. I, I, I was an avid watcher of bowls as a youngster, learned all my tactics probably uh, from watching. Um, in those early days when I was prohibited from playing, I wasn't allowed to play uh, until I was well into my late uh, teens. That was the rules in those days, sadly. Um, but uh, I watched. Um, and, and certainly knew the rudiments of, of, of the game um, from, from watching. Certainly, uh, I'm always interested in, to watch bowls. Always have been. Well, Darren's starting now to find his consistent form. I think that last end, um, Jason has just lifted him a bit. He played some nice, uh, consistent drawing bowls, and he just hope, wants to hope that um, this guy doesn't get one in first uh, uh, before him. But uh, I think he has. 
Wait, go. A little more confident on the map now, Darren. Um, he, he was all at sea with himself, and he, he looks like he's, you know, he, he looks a little bit more content. Body language is important. It's important when, particularly when you're playing someone, is that you actually get to learn a little bit about them. There's an awful lot to watch when you're playing, and you do need to concentrate on your own game, but it's, it's worth looking sometimes when what your opponent's doing, when you know when you've got them in trouble, when you know that you're in trouble as well. Just needs to get inside this. Well, still in the area. Would have preferred it just inside. I think Darren may still have two second shots. Um, he will be looking. I think there'll be enough in, in this bowl here to. I think he'll be over the, over the weight. He'll miss wide, but I think he, he will be drawing with. Um, with some anticipation of either touching the front bowl or, or, well, or risking the shot. That's not, that's not Darren. No, we've seen this quite a few times down this backhand. It's, it's, the, the margins are so tight. You know, that bowl's finished a good oh, four or five feet tight. That's probably two bowls off the line, if that. So what you're really saying, um, there is that you know that there's something in 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 the way it's laid and that it actually is is exaggerated that that makes that bowl exaggerate it wasn't really such a bad bowl um and if it was a couple of a foot wider it would have been on target relate that when people are watching how can somebody four, that much make what seemingly was a dreadful shot but it, it, he probably in reality wasn't too far off the line that he intended nope not at all but it's ken that has this single he's got gone back to his preferred length matt's back up the green again Big game for Darren. He's, uh, he's seeded number 11 in this event, provisionally ranked joint 14. These three players sat on provisionally 14 Michael Stepney, Alex Marshall, and Darren himself. Won everything on the tour. Won this event back in 2014, did Darren. to press the panic button yet there's a long way to go in this set he's just to try to keep it tight even if he lo loses his end it's 5-2 it's not it's not unachievable there's no no need to press that panic button yet One green. You still have first shot? Yes, one green. How far was my last one? Three. Your last one was three feet. Thank you. Well, looking for real nice pace to get back to Darren's. I think he's just slightly overplayed it. Past the head though isn't a massive disaster. 
four inches. If the bowl wrong there, it would have been ideal just to be on the other side of the bowl, but it's in the area. I'm sure whether Dar Darren will try just to draw it or just to fan it away. Yep, just looking to chip it away from the jack. Doesn't want to get his own. Something very similar. Sorry, guys. if it was in the count and it wasn't creating a target yeah okay. excellent bowl it just depends here now if there is an actual gap between this shot bowl and the jack if there's a slight gap there's a possibility of removing the green bowls darren has got really quite a stupid. few he's got a few red balls waiting there tony hasn't he yeah, that's what I was just about to say uh, he, he has. Uh, you know, first, it's a bit, really a bit of a hit and hope. He's got to hit it and then hope everything falls well. Well, again... Ken Chan from Hong Kong is playing some really good steady draw balls here. He's got Darren on the run. 6-2 now in this second set. Darren will want to start making his move. Won't want to leave it too late. We have already in these championships seen Jack Lentz, 25 and a half, some of the, the top 16 players get knocked out. Lost our number 8 seed, David Goulet, MBE. Our number 12 seed, Mark Royal. We've also seen yesterday number 4 seed, Robert Paxton, get beat by David Bolt. So qualifiers are on form this year, that's for certain. What is interesting is that um, a lot of players will have probably during the, the pandemic uh, have not played quite as uh, regularly at, at, and perhaps hasn't been the, the, the massive events that usually happen. Um, and for all sorts of reasons of lockdown, haven't been able to, to practice. So um, it, 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 it will, will affect uh, each individual in a different way. And I'm not making excuses for those that have perhaps fallen by the wayside, but particularly indoors. And, and uh, I, I won't go into the detail why I think it, it, this, is, it, this is the fact, but it is a fact that um, indoors you have to play regularly um, and outdoors you can play less and still maintain uh, a, a, a great standard but indoor I, I actually think it's far more demanding um, and it, it needs regular play uh, and regular competitive play uh, to keep to keep you you right in in with a, a a great chance in tournaments like this and I think that a lot of players um, are, are actually lack uh, um, actually lack the the, 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 the tournament practice or the tournament participation perhaps um, and that might have, have, have created a, a more open playing field I wonder if you might have seen the first weighted shot here from uh, this this draw player actually is drawing it with conviction. I'm not sure um, actually whether 
given Darren's opportunity, whether in fact he would have played that shot. I think it would be would have been a far better a, a direct shot. Lots of angles on there and all the back bowls, but um, he might be facing three down in a minute. Uh, probably Darren has seen that back position and yeah, he's looking for uh, I think I it, when I'm six two up in the set behind I'd be looking at trying to take one of those red one of those two red counting bowls out. The jack's good. Yeah, he played the attacking shot very well in the pairs against Alex and Paul. You know, he, like you say, he's got a bear jack in the ditch. You can actually take both red bowls out here. As long as he removes one, that's a bonus. But I'd, I'd definitely be playing at them. Keeping with the is, draw. It's the percentage shot, really. It's wrong. I think he's probably outside the line. I, I think he was trying to give the ball the bias too much to say, too much to do, and um, I, I believe I, I believe he's played a very very sound tactical game up to this point, where I think that he was he made a mistake here with not only the last ball but the ball before. Could be three shots down, and um, and this is the break that Darren's been waiting for. That's a disaster. I'm surprised at that. I think it's just two for Darren Burnett. Set score of 4-6 after five ends. So, here comes the comeback. Jack length 29 metres. Again, two very good opening balls from both of these players. Darren just gets to the jack. Mm, lucky. I'm holding shot. Yes, one green. Any improvement on Ken's last ball? Can get down to Darren's if he's slightly overplayed. Ooh, just left this short. Chance again for Darren just to close this head up. Hmm. Well, that weight look that make good on that um, um, bowl. If he'd have just missed it, it it's uh, uh, an interesting head here. Look, both uh, both bowls are strategic uh, strategically in the way i certainly thought the bowl on the backhand is probably right in the way um on this forehand which is a little wider 
needs to sneak around that front green bowl with good weight um, and, and um, see if he can arrest the shot here. Yeah, it's a good hand, this forehand. It'll come all the way back with a, a good pace, which it has done. Excellent bowl. Two to Kent. I don't know whether he'll probably now decide to chance his hand. Two green bowls. Got to get it right. Yep, looking for two bowls solid, even a flick on the shot bowl. Yep, there we go. Very good hit. Excellent drive shot. Ken. <laughs> Ken's doing Bernie's work for her. <laughs> She'll just quickly check that. Yep. Yeah. Bernie not taking any chances there. Busy doing the housekeeping. To, yeah. To, to, to <laughs> oh, relatively simple shot, but under the circumstances, uh, there's a bit of a pressure. It's an important, very important shot. for the score from 7-4 to 5-6 is a, a very, very different game. Yeah, and wherever he puts this, Dan's going to have a chance to remove it. If he can just finish right in front. <laughs> Can't remove it, he sent his balls. <laughs> Set score 4-7 after six ends. Get, Ken's just getting his rag running down. He's a great character, Ken. I've just uh, been spending a couple of hours with him during the day with his his wife, and it's, uh, he's got a great sense of humour. Cracking player, great sense of humour. Experience of the player. Yeah, and twenty-five and a half meters. Will remember that he's still, you know, he's, he's up against it, but he's still very much in the game. He will be thinking that while I'm here, not the end of the world. Three shots adrift, one set adrift. He's been in similar positions like this before, many, many times, as as a lot of players have, but particularly Darren and. You know, he, he's got this, he's played some wonderful, wonderful conversion shots. Hasn't missed a lot at all. If he could only just get this, it's the draw shot that he's really, really struggled with. He's felt very uncomfortable. Darren always, always actually is sort of, just sometimes looks like he's grimacing when he delivers, but, but it's, it's something you have to ignore. It's just a, a natural thing. He, he sort of grimaced when he played that perfect shot. It doesn't necessarily always mean, like a lot of players, they grimace when they feel that their, that, that their shot is not a good one. But um, I've noticed Darren, in, you know, over the years, that you think, oh, he's not right there. But generally speaking, um, he, he, um, he, it's a characteristic of his play. And that was a great opening ball. Well, a nice little nudge will do. Yeah, very good second. Very that close, Darren. Great. Slightly favour red. Great goodbye. Give Darren much more, much option than to try to put another one around, and then to have a look at the, the situation. But. Um, it will be a it will be a miracle bowl to get another <laughs> shot out of it. So I think what you do in this sense is to try to get another one around. It's awfully close. Will be pleased with that. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, so this bowl needs to be near. I, with the way that forehand playing and the big swing, he had a great chance to play that forehand, playing using the last bowl of Darren's as the target. Draw to that bowl and sit in. You might even get shot. Even if you didn't, you've got a, a nice position. Because I'm not. Sh I, I actually would wonder if Darren might also um, cha change his hand here onto the forehand. Yes, I think he will. So, big swing hand. I don't know what that was about. Unless he thought he's not, he wasn't the shot. But any ideas what that was about? I think maybe he was just trying to play either down to Ken's bowl. If he gets Ken's bowl solid and stop for the three and then play decent enough pace where maybe if he made contact with his live bowl, he was pushing it maybe far enough through Tony, maybe. Not quite sure. Mm. Got to wait on it. Yeah. Okay. Ken, do us a favour and play on the forehand. I think that's your, um, that's tactically correct. Um, but if you're confident in your shot, he, he certainly drew it with his uh, his, his second ball. Any right. touch with decent pace onto his ball. Yeah. Well, he's, he's on a line. Any touch on his own. It's, it's a draw on the forehand to try to turn that green one away. It's it's about having the right pace. He can he can just turn if he turns the bowl once, might be suffice. He can't be too heavy because he could if he if he had hit his own shot bowl, the jack would spring. So it, it's it's delicate trying to edge that green bowl away. Not a million miles away. Just ever so slightly underneath. Favours it. I don't know whether Darren I'm not sure he wants to risk that measure. You can say from the camera angle it's always hard to tell, but it certainly does look like one to red. Okay, just having a, a quick check. Yep, one shot. Aaron Burnett. Set score of 5 7 after 7 innings. A few comments about the shorts that Ken has on. Quite, quite trendy designs in, in Hong Kong, Tony, aren't they? You know, they are they are bowl shorts. You know, they are, they are allowed in Hong Kong. Uh, it's, it's great to see. Um, the sport ne definitely needs to move forward. Um, it'd be great if we can get, you know, some of the bigger major Batman, sports brands and involved and into bowls gear like anything with bowls at the moment we, something needs to happen and, and something needs to change i think if we're to succeed at, at any level it's a yeah, hard spot I, 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 the, the the concept of, of shorts was um a difficult one to to be introduced into the sport but but it is actually it's actually come in now and i think it's particularly um necessary in australia not new zealand hong kong I mean, hong kong is when I played over there, the humidity was was unbelievable, and and it, it's par for the course, you know. And uh, um, I, I think it's very difficult in, in a sense that snooker and bowls are alike. Um, there's there's certain traditional traits that um, I, I believe are important to keep. However, um, can, that's a conditional statement, subject to it not holding the sport back. Uh, and and that's the challenge uh, in all of this. I don't think we'll ever see. Well, I don't know. We can never say never. But as nuclear players, in short, I don't think so. But who knows? How far is my ball behind, please? Three feet. All right. Where we, we see the attacking ball. Manny will play this. Yeah, he's playing the forehand. I think he needs to go early. It's a nice target.
Yeah. Well, in the Body area. Language. Body language, he liked it. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. It was just a little bit unfortunate just to get that little kiss off his off his own bowl. It was actually following the jack at one point, but it's finished well. That's not going to be easy to get to. Changing forehand inside the line. Need to clear run. Needs to avoid his own bowls. Stay on. Well, if this stays on, this is superb. Well, uh, just ever so slightly gone off, maybe just a foot of pace extra. How far is my shot ball in front of the jack? Six feet. It's a fact. It's a very hard shot to compose back down to a draw shot when you've played late. Something about stretching the muscles and then trying to bring them all back into a delicate, delicate draw shot. You avoid that ball. Well, yeah. <laughs> Three green. Well, it's in. Yep. Now, this is a very important bowl here. If he loses this three, that's game over. And it looks an easy shot, and it isn't. No, nope, it's not an easy shot. One or two balls in the way. Is he reaching, Tony? No, I, I don't think he... From, from the, from the um, Foxwell camera <laughs> angle, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a safe game, though. He has indeed. That was the main thing. No. Oh. Just asking Bernie how many... Only really favours the one. Well, the, if he draws this, sorry, no, I'm holding one. I think so. Oh. Yeah, close to the shot, but a favour green. Uh, I think he, he, he just needs to make sure yep. uh, of making this count. He only needs two to win this game. Oh, the timer! The timer! The timer! Oh dear, 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 dear! What, what a time! What a time to miss the timer! Yeah, and, and let's just hope that he wins the measure if it is one, because if not, that will a psychological blow. He'll be thinking about that all of the next ten. That's the first time in this championships that's happened. It's it's not unusual, you know, when you're so focused. There is a there is a clock at both ends of the rink. You can see just slightly off centre both ends of the rink. Like you say, Tony, if, if he's one down here, he's going to oh. really struggle to get that out of his mind. Hi, please. So it looks like one's been. One's taken away, do you think? Um, yeah. I think the shot has been con con conceded. Yeah, you can just see. Just for the purpose of anybody that's just, that's been, I'm actually miles away from, uh, yeah, from you Jason. Can <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've already got the screen, yeah. Yeah, you can see Ken's ball was nearer to the centre of the rink than Darren's ball, which is why it's a shot. You can see Bernie's arm there. So if it's one, we go into another end. If it's two, that's Ken Chan into the second round of this world singles let's have a look it's got the lip of the ditch to contend with could be two tony yeah i think so that could be two shots to ken chan and it is yes well two shot. that's second two second shots to ken chan ken and it's chan. ken chan that takes out the ranked 11th player in this world championships Darren Bennett, oh, what a, a lovely gesture there from Ken Chan. Just quickly, Tony, thank you very much for joining us this morning from the Cotswolds. Pleasure, pleasure, Mel. I'll obviously join you again when invited. No, nope, it's, it's been our pleasure. Don't you worry about it. Our pleasure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a quick look at what we have for the rest of today. 
So, two o'clock, we have world number one Nick Brett taking on the American qualifier of Lauren Dion. Following that game, round about 3.30, Alex Marshall, MBE, taking on the Irish qualifier of Mark McPeak. And into the evening session we go at 7.30 with Greg Harlow and Danny Dixon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what a fantastic morning of bowls. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back at 2 o'clock. Until then, bye-bye for now.